good to know. All right, so now we're gonna take off your union hat and we're gonna introduce Annette Berry, who is currently working as a non-union member, which is kind of a unique position to be in because lots of people who stick with unions are there for life, right? Mm. So, um, okay, I'm gonna ask you the same question, but with your non-union hat, what are the benefits of not being part of a union? What do you enjoy about not being part of a union? Hmm. Um, there is more freedom in the roles that you perform. Uh, in the past, when I had approached uh, administration to um, change hours around to accommodate more after school support, um, I was not allowed within the parameters because of the union to mm -hmm. change my work hours. With not a union, you have the flexibility of moving that around. So if I wanted to maybe provide evening support, if that was what I wanted, I could shift my hours around. Um, so I find with not a union, there's a lot more flexibility. Okay. So have there been any situations in the company you currently work for that may have been resolved more positively if a union was established? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Uh, one of the things about unions, it sets out the workday, the expectations, the hours. Um, when you don't have a union, and um, you get a little clause at the bottom says, and other duties as requested, that is leaving you open to a lot of interpretation as okay. far as weekends, evenings. Um, so you have to establish that clearly when you start with them, what are the expectation of the hours? Is there um, after hours uh, expectations? Is there weekends? Are they flexible with moving their days around? So that takes a little bit of negotiation, like with a union and how it's laid out, that's how it's laid out. It's sort of done for you, yeah. So, so okay, and then that sort of leads us to the next question. So how are contracts and raises and those kinds of things, how do they get negotiated at, with a non-unionized workplace? Like if you are realizing that inflation has gone up and your expenses have skyrocketed, um, who do you talk to about getting a raise? How does that happen? Uh, who advocates for you? How does that work in a non-unionized place? Okay, um, if there is nothing set within your contract about a, depends on the operation. Some contracts are term, like year to year. Some contracts are, um, has a set amount of time. Uh, you ha can, you have to, basically advocate for yourself. Uh, if with the teachers, even with uh, this non-union, there is a grid, what we call, it's the same as the provincial, the number of years of experience that you have, this is where you would start. And then every year for that cost of living that you're talking about or inflation, the salary goes up and then they hit, you hit a max. So, um, if that's laid out in your contract, great. If it's not, then it's up to the individual to approach their boss to say, I have done this and this and this. Um, I think my value is important to this company. Um, is it possible for me to get a raise? And there's benefits and drawbacks to that too, I guess, because knowing that it's in your hands, you can like make a case and hope that that is understood by your manager. But in saying that, with non-union, when you go to a manager and manager says, no, it sort of stops there. So you either find another job or yeah. have what you have. Okay. So, so you don't go through that with the union because it is very clear what happens set out, right? So, um, and so, uh, I mean, there's the security of that knowing is nice. And, but I also like the flexibility of a non-union because- so, Yeah, no, go ahead, because why? Um, because uh, sometimes doing the same thing and over and over again and it's not working, then you have to think differently. Yeah. So the, the, the uniqueness about a non-union job is that you can think outside the box and you can provide the services that you think are needed rather than what you have, you're not restricted to what you can provide. The parameters aren't really as strict. Yeah, that makes sense. So actually, this is a good question because it, it may have had some impact on you. So not that long ago, KPBSB, the, the public school board did go on strike, I wanna say a couple of years ago. So while they were on strike, you were actually working for Kobe. 
to mm -hmm. it in the book of Makana. Yeah. So was Kobe affected at all by the teachers in Sioux Lookout, for example, being on strike and you being working for a, a, an organization that was not unionized? Were you impacted by that provincial strike at all? Um, only in like peripheral fringe ways, um, staff that maybe had children that were now home. Um, we have a partnership with KP. So our EPP was part of like training for getting teachers to get their end tip. Uh, that was all straight, that was all yeah. stopped. Uh, we couldn't do meetings with KP. So that impacted us that way. So we had to like work around that. Um, but not like in the future, if we didn't have that partnership or other organizations that would not have impacted what we do because of the federal system is very different than the provincial. Okay, good to know. And we've been learning lots in this course actually about uh, even like Employment Standards Act and how federal standards are not the same as provincial. And so, yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so, um, strike off of Okay, so, and when you, we've heard about work stoppages, we've heard about strikes and lots of job action. I'm not sure why this question is in here, but when you hear about these stoppages in the news as a non-union member, let's say, so non-union hat on here, which work action or strike lockout have you followed the most closely and why? So as a non-union member, what strike lockout or union action has impacted you the most and that you followed the most? Um, in general, it doesn't have to be education. Okay. Um, well, I live in Sioux Lookout. So um, there has been several CN strikes over the years and it's been very visible if you go downtown um, and the post office because especially the post office affects the general public maybe more so than CN because um, we're not aware of the ultimate impact of the rate, the train stopping, but we're very, very much aware of when our mail stops or we can't go in to purchase things. Um, so as that in most of my life, being a union member, we, we often will support other unions by going out and picketing with them, walking, bringing them food, uh, making our unions usually donate to their unions to help spread if there's families that need extra money, um, so there's almost like what you, I'm not going to say brotherhood, but I'm going to say sisterhood of uh, understanding um, and feeling that maybe it's going to be us next time. So you support and uh, help as much as you possibly can. Okay, so we're going to think back before you were ever a teacher. I don't know, if it wasn't that long ago. So I know that you've worked in other jobs as a non-unionized employee in the hospitality industry. So back then, how have your, had, like, what was different about your attitude towards um, striking and um, being a non-unionized employee when you saw unions go out on strike? And um, Often the media portrays it as a money grab. They're only after money, et cetera. But um, I often want to know what, what exactly they're, especially if it's working conditions. I think people are more, um, sympathetic to a union if what they're trying to do is improve the uh, conditions of their workplace um, as opposed to more money, right? Um, sometimes there's a bit of a pushback from the uh, communities or from society if, okay, I wish I could get more money too, but I can't go on strike. Like often we would get that from the hospital, not hospitality, but the hospitals yeah. because they can't strike because they're an essential service. And at one point they were even talking of making teaching an essential service. Okay. So that it would handcuff anybody in the future trying to strike and in in, in negotiate. So, um, and sometimes uh, small businesses, <laughs> maybe they'd like to strike for higher prices, right? I don't know. Um, it's, it really depends on your personal situation and where you are and what perspective you have had. I grew up in a union family. I remember being like having my father go on strike. I didn't understand it, but we had powdered milk. We didn't have as much food in the house because they were on strike. And wow. that's all I remember is that we had to do with less because my father was on strike 
and I didn't understand all the ramifications, but, um, and I had it personally drilled in that you do not cross a picket line, but that's mine. Okay, so that's a good last question, Ken. So if the opportunity arose to unionize in your current workplace, would you vote in favor of it or against it and why or why not? So if someone came to you tomorrow and said, Annette, we're starting a union. Let's well, do it. What do you, what's your, what's your reaction? What are you going to say? My reaction is um, it's the federal system is not the same as the provincial system. And that would have to be, I don't think you would have the collective large unions that you would have, let's say in the provincial systems, because every community is autonomous. They can decide for themselves what they want to do. So one community may decide they want to do something like that but another community may not. So um, I would basically say to somebody, you better do your homework and find out if this is really something that the community wants or yeah. um, because otherwise I don't think it would be worthwhile because if people are not on board and they want this, then I don't really think it's gonna serve the purpose that it was originally intended for. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I super appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think the students have lots to work with. You gave lots of really good feedback and they'll all get A's on their assignments now. So. I hope so. There you go. <laughs> okay. Have a great day, everybody. All right. Thanks, Annette. I'll call Bye. you later. Bye.